Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Vijay Lakshmi. Today we are going to discuss about clustering. So clustering is an unsupervised learning. Okay, till now we have discussed uh, supervised learning algorithms. So now clustering is a type of unsupervised learning. So here it's a technique of partitioning collection of unlabeled objects that may have attributes into meaningful disjoint groups or clusters. We can uh, classify them based on a trial and error approach since there is no supervisor here okay since we don't have any supervisor so here uh, we are going to uh, classify the instances or objects based on the trial and error method approach for example you consider that you have plotted so you have given a sample of uh, uh, data set assume that you are plotting a graph height versus weight now here now some of the points which are uh, falling might be clustered here some points might be plotted here and some points might be here and some of the points here and there like this. So here for example there might be blue points, black points like this. Okay, So now if I want to cluster, group it now here. So cluster is nothing but a group. I can group this as one full cluster and I can group this as one cluster and we can group this as one cluster. So here we have three different clusters here. Now how these three different clusters in turn, in turn can be clubbed into a single cluster. So how we are say categorizing, we don't have a supervisor here, but we have to categorize that this particular data point belongs to this cluster or this cluster or uh, the data point falls under this cluster. So now how we are going to categorize means just by visual appearance, just we said all these points are near so I am for making this as one cluster, this as one cluster. So totally I have three clusters here now. So here suppose my number of dimensions are increased. Okay, I have n number of di dimensions. For example, the I have 100 features or I might be having 200 features. So then at that point what happens, this clustering visually we cannot analyze which data points that is the samples. Here the samples whatever we are using, we, are co we call it as the data points. So uh, these data points falls under which cluster? It's difficult to predict. So what we do for such kind of things, we make use of the clustering algorithms. So we have different kinds of cluster algorithms. These algorithms are based on the calculation of mean and the centroid. They are based on mean and centroid of each of the point we try to categorize into different cluster. To categorize into different cluster, what we do? We, dry, we try to draw a plain line like this. We are going to draw a line. And we see that each time we shift these points, for example, I will take two clusters. So since here it is three clusters, it might be difficult for us to understand better. So I will take now two clusters. Assume that I have some points here and there like this. And some points are here. It's a mixed combination of two data points. I have black and yellow. Okay. Now I have assumed, assumed that I have identified two clusters. This is cluster K1 and this is cluster K2. And there are some more data points in between randomly. Okay. So randomly there are some more data points. Now here to identify these points belongs to which particular cluster, I will draw a hyperplane like this. Okay, guys. And after drawing the hyperplane, I will uh, see the, the points whether they are near to this or the uh, which are the points which are near to this plane above or below. So based on that, I am going to decide this point belongs to here or not. And also you can see here some of the data points are associated with blue color and black color. This black color all should, points should come to this cluster and blue all should go there. So I should categorize into two clusters now. So how I am going to do that? So I am going to take the mean and centroid of each of the data point. I, for this cluster, I will take the mean and the centroid and see what is the mean of this particular data points, whether they are near to this cluster centroid or whether they are to near to this centroid cluster. So whichever is near, this data point will be, give a, will be allotted to this particular cluster. So each time I add the cluster, uh, data point to this cluster, its mean and centroid automatically will change. Again, we will we'll take the next uh, point, next data point here. This is data point 2 and data point 1 and data point 3. 
Next, we take the next data point. Again, we compare. We check what is the mean and centroid. What is the distance between this data point and the centroid of this data point? So here, whether it is near to this or whether it is near to this. Based on that, I may uh, shift my data point to this cluster or to this cluster. After shifting, again the centroid of this cluster, mean and centroid of this cluster and this cluster will change. Again, we shift like this. So each time a new data point is added into a cluster, it's the uh, mean and centroid position changes because you are adding some additional data points into the cluster means obviously the mean changes so like this you go on adding the data points till you get a straight line like this categorizing into two categories okay so that is called as clustering grouping okay guys so here what is the difference between classification and clustering so here clustering is an unsupervised learning whereas Classification is a supervised learning. So here, with the help of a supervisor, it will undergo a training. Okay, training and testing of data is done with the help of a supervisor in classification. But in clustering, it has to uh, form groups like this based on trial and error method. There is no supervisor. And here it is unlabeled data. Okay, clusters makes use of unlabeled data. It will learn by the Experience it is gaining each time it is adding a point into the cluster based on the distance from the centroid of one cluster to this point. So it will learn how it has to classify the data point into which particular cluster. And here supervised learning takes use of a labeled data. And here uh, third point, no prior knowledge in clustering. It, here it doesn't have any prior knowledge. But here knowledge of the domain is must. To label the samples of the data space in classification and whatever the clustering results it is producing it is dynamic it means that it is not static it goes on changing like how I said each time you had a data point it's a uh, it's a centroid and the mean gets changing so for to add the new data point again you have to compute the Euclidean distance between this point and this and from this point and this and then again you have to take the decision whichever is near to that particular one we will add the data point to that cluster and here in case of classification once a label is assigned okay once a label is assigned it does not change it remains constant always so this is the major difference between clustering and classification coming for some of the applications of uh, clustering here grouping is based on cluster buying patterns so where actually we are using means whenever the customer when it is our whenever he based on the user's requirements seasonally which are the products he is purchasing for us for some business analytics and all so this grouping method to identify the customers who which are the products he is purchasing what is his taste of interest is so based on that some of the uh, customers has to be grouped and uh, uh, information has to be sent to them related to the products so that is nothing but grouping based on clustering by buying patterns what are the who are the customers what type of products they are buying in each of the year okay based on seasonal we decide for that we use this this is one of the best application and profiling of customers based on lifestyle so here uh, we always we know that uh, the recommendation systems in recommendation systems based on the lifestyle of the customer what products he is uh, purchasing the recommendation system may give him some suggestions on the products what he is going to buy so that is one of the application of clustering and in information retrieval applications that is a uh, retrieval of documents from a uh, set of uh, collection of documents we can make use of clustering and identifying the groups of genes that influence a disease so here whether the person is adding, uh, is uh, having a cancerous disease or not to identify the type of genes okay or uh, in the dna also we make use of this clustering algorithms and also identification of op, uh, identification of organs that are similar in physiological functions. Okay, why uh, uh, we use this and taxonomy of plants, animals, and uh, uh, in uh, biology and zoology also for clustering for classifying the taxonomy of plants and animals, we make use of this clustering application and clustering based on purchasing. Okay, based on purchasing behavior and demography. And doc for documenting and indexing, we use clustering. And for data compression, by grouping similar objects 
and uh, to find duplicate objects in a given uh, sample of data of documents, we can make use of this uh, cluster name. So these are some of the applications of clustering. So hope you have understood this depth and introduction part of uh, clustering. In the next uh, coming videos, we'll see the algorithms on clustering. Please don't forget to subscribe, like and comment. Thank you.